Hi, in this lesson, I'm going to be talking about rational functions. And the first thing that I wanna talk about when we get into rational functions is the domain of a function. And with the domain, I'll also be talking about vertical asymptotes. Before I talk specifically about the domain of a rational function, let's do a quick review about what a rational function is and what domain is. So the definition of a rational function is that is, it is the quotient of two polynomials where the second polynomial cannot equal zero. So I have a, the definition here on this paper. It says f of x is p of x over q of x where p of x and q of x are just polynomials. And q of x specifically in the denominator cannot equal zero. So before I get into that, I kind of want to explain why. Why can it not equal zero? If we go back to a basic example, uh, six divided by two, we know that six divided by two is three because two times three is six. Now, if I change the denominator to zero, six divided by zero, zero times what? is six, nothing. We can't find a value that makes this statement true. And so when zero is in the denominator, we call it undefined. We cannot compute what this would be because there's not a unique value that exists for that statement. So we relate that to domain. Domain is the set of possible x values for a given function. And when we're talking about the set of possible x values, we're talking about what values of x can we plug into the function? Where can we evaluate that function for x? In functions like rational functions, there are values that make the function, that's a lot of function, undefined. The denominator is associated with the domain of the function because that's the area, that's the place in our function that's gonna create problems. If it's zero, then we have an undefined point in the graph. And these undefined points in the graph, when we're talking about x values, are called vertical asymptotes. A vertical asymptote is an imaginary line where the function is undefined. And in order to find a vertical asymptote, we have to know about the domain. So I have a couple examples down here. And I, before I move on, I wanna note that denominator is domain. D, D, get it? So the first example, we are just stating the excluded values of the domain. Now, what we know about domain is that it's associated with the denominator. So what happens is the denominator, if it were to equal zero, we would have an undefined point in our graph. So we need to figure out where that is. Where does x minus three equal zero? Is basically what we're asking ourselves. So we would add three and at x equals three, the function is undefined. If I were to plug in three, three minus three is zero, one over zero is undefined. So we say that x cannot equal three because it would make the function undefined. Now, if you had to state the domain, this is stating the excluded value. We would have to exclude three from our domain. So if we were to write that in interval notation, we would have negative infinity to three, and then there's a break in the graph, three to infinity and you put parentheses on the three because we cannot include it in our domain. It's skipped. For the next example, we're doing the same thing. If we're looking for excluded values in the domain, we're focusing on the denominator. And what we want is 
I guess in the previous example, we could say we don't want it to equal three. That might kind of help go down the process. Um, I was saying here, where does it equal, not three, where does it equal zero, not three, sorry. Um, and so we're finding that place where it equals zero, but where it equals zero is where X cannot equal. So it's kind of weird with the signage there, but hopefully you get my drift. So over here, we're trying to find the place where this polynomial equals zero. We're trying to find where that is so that then we can state our excluded values. And that's why I changed the signs in that first example. So if I were to solve this, this is going to relate back to our quadratic functions. We have a quadratic function that's to the second power equal to zero. So if we wanna solve a quadratic function, we're either going to factor, use the quadratic formula or complete the square. I like to factor, I feel like it's faster, but if you want to do the quadratic formula, then please feel free to do that. Um, if you wanna pause it and try this and then check your answer with me, go ahead and do that. Otherwise keep watching. We're looking for factors of negative 18 that add to three. So I know I'm gonna have X's here and then factors of negative 18 that add to three are positive six, negative three. Those two numbers add to three and multiply to negative 18. Then I split up each factor by the zero product principle and solve each one. And I get negative six, positive three. These are the excluded values from my domain because at either of those values, I'm going to get zero in the denominator. So if I plug in, three here, three minus three is zero, zero times this is zero, which makes it an excluded value because it makes a function undefined. Same for negative six. So if it's asking for excluded values, we would say X cannot equal negative six or three, and that would be our answer. If it's asking for the domain, then we would extend that and say, it goes from negative infinity to negative six, and then we jump in the graph, negative six to three, and then we jump in the graph, three to infinity. So it's kind of broken up, and these little breaks indicate a place in the graph where it's undefined, and it's gonna create a discontinuity in our graph, a jump, if you will. Last example, We've got, um, whoops, x squared minus 16 in the denominator. And we wanna find where that equals zero because those values need to be excluded. There's two ways you can, well, there's more than two ways, but two ways that come to my mind that we can solve this. We can use the square root property or we can factor or quadratic formula. So I guess there's three, but the first two that came to mind were square root property and factoring. So if you wanna pause it and try it to practice your skills with quadratic functions, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'm gonna use the square root function, um, square root property, sorry. I'm gonna add 16 and then I'm gonna square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. This is, those are inverse operations, so X pops out and the square root of 16 is four. So the two places the two X values that need to be excluded from my domain are negative four and positive four. If I evaluate the function at either of those points, I'm gonna get zero in the denominator, which makes the function undefined. If you were to write this in interval notation, we would go negative infinity to negative four, negative four to positive four, and then, whoops, we're out of room here, four to infinity. Let's take a quick look at the graph of this just so you can kind of see a picture representation of what I'm talking about when I say discontinuity. I'm gonna to go to my graphing calculator. This app, if you want it, is graph in calc 83. And I'm gonna type in my original function. Be careful about how you type this in. If you don't have a fraction function, you're going to want to use parentheses. So three divided by parentheses, 
x squared minus 16, close the parentheses. This is telling the calculator that this is my denominator. All of this is the denominator. If you don't specify, then your calculator will read it the way that you typed it in. 3 divided by x squared and then minus 16, which is a totally different function. Let's look at the graph here. And on this calculator, it's kind of nice. It's showing those vertical asymptotes is what they're called. And you can see that at negative 4, the green part is a graph. And then it kind of skips over this imaginary line. They actually graphed it in. And then I have graph in between negative four and four. And there's another skip in the graph and then the rest of it. So these two skips in the graph are the places where the function is undefined, which we found algebraically by setting the denominator equal to zero. And then hopefully you can relate the interval for domain by looking at this graph. We have x values from negative infinity to negative 4, and then there's a break. Negative 4 to 4, and then there's a break. 4 to infinity. So that's where I'm getting that. That's where that's coming for, from, and it's formed by those excluded values. Which brings me to the next thing. The x values in the domain that make the function undefined create discontinuity, and these are called vertical asymptotes, which is a really funny word, and it's spelled really odd, but it just is pronounced asymptote. My dog's middle name is asymptote, actually. <laughs> but anyway, um, so these asymptotes are imaginary lines that the graph can never cross, can never touch. It's an imaginary boundary that the graph is, the shape of the graph is formed by this boundary. We had that boundary at negative four and the graph was going like this and then it hits that boundary and it moves up like that. It forms our graph. And then down at the bottom, we had that uh, other part of the graph that was created by this boundary. And we call those boundaries asymptotes. We have vertical asymptotes. We also have horizontal asymptotes and slant asymptotes. In this video, we're only talking about vertical. For the three examples above, write the equation of the vertical asymptote based on the domain. So when it says state the excluded value, we just say x cannot equal three, but the equation of the vertical asymptote is this part right here, which is why I kind of left, I did equal signs here originally. The equation of the vertical asymptote is this right here. Whoa, that went crazy pants. Maybe it'll, oh, that'll work. And then the equation of the vertical asymptotes are here. These are equations of lines because a vertical asymptote is a line. So the line is x equals negative six because it is a vertical line through x equals negative six. And so when it's asking for the equation of the line of the vertical asymptote, it is asking for just that. If it's asking for excluded values, they want this. If it's asking for domain, they want this. So there's just several different ways to state these places of discontinuity in the graph. And then the last one, the vertical asymptotes would be here. X equals negative four and X equals positive four. That's all I have for vertical asymptotes. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help.